Hi guys, here is Dr. MIH. Today we are starting our first project, the three acids. We are going to begin with making hydrochloric acid today. As we all know, hydrochloric acid is a very useful reagent in chemical experiments. However, I will only use hydrochloric acid in some special cases and for other casual cases, I will use substitutes such as ammonium chloride or ferric chloride since they are both quite acidic. I will be following Nurbridge's method with slight modifications. Here are the reagents for today and it is quite simple. Sodium bisulfate, sodium chloride, and water. First, we build our apparatus. Our apparatus consists of a 150 milliliters conical flask, a condenser, a receiving flask, an ice water bath, an air pump, a water basin, a power supply, several tubings, and a syringe. Our reactants will react in the flask and the acid formed will distill out through the condenser and to the receiving flask. The syringe has many usage and you'll see in a second. I will put the ice bath in later because I want it to chill a bit more. Measure out 69.04 grams of sodium bisulfate monohydrate in a beaker and add 63 milliliters of water to dissolve it. Then, measure out 29.22 grams of sodium chloride in another beaker. Dump the sodium chloride into the conical flask. Meanwhile, our ice bath is ready. It was not technically a water bath, since it is actually a saturated calcium chloride solution. Calcium chloride is the main ingredient in the road salts, where you spray salt onto the ice on the road and the ice melts. The saturated solution of calcium chloride can reach a freezing point of negative 40 to negative 50 degrees Celsius, but I haven't cooled it that far, and you can see it's around negative 5. Anyways, put the ice bath under the receiving flask. Now we are ready to start the reaction. Pour the sodium bisulfate solution into the conical flask with the sodium chloride inside and seal the apparatus tightly. We are now ready to begin our heating process. I have an alcohol lamp, but I chose to use a hair dryer because it has a high power rating of 2100 watts. I have done some research and found that it actually works. We'll see in a second. Start the hair dryer and heat the flask gently. The reaction had proceeded for a while and proved that the hair dryer was a bad idea. It only warmed up the surface of the flask, and since the wind is flowing fast, most of its heat had gone away with the wind. So I switched back to my alcohol lamp, although many of you guys would prefer a hot plate or a Bunsen burner. Anyways, I think this is a good time to explain how the reaction works. This is a double replacement reaction between sodium bisulfate and sodium chloride to produce sodium sulfate and hydrogen chloride. The sodium bisulfate, NaHSO4, has a hydrogen in its molecule that is able to dissociate into hydrogen ions. Therefore, it has a strong acidity and is commonly used as a substitute of sulfuric acid. The main difference between the two is that the hydrogen in the bisulfate does not completely dissociate, while the two hydrogen in the sulfuric acid dissociates completely. This explains the difference in acidity. The reaction is called double displacement because the sulfate ion displaces the chloride ion from the sodium chloride to hydrogen chloride. In middle school, teachers mention that double displacement reactions only happen if one of the products is a precipitate or a gas. This is the case here, since hydrogen chloride is a gas, which easily escapes out, driving the reaction to completion. This is called involatile acid making volatile acid, since hydrogen chloride has a low boiling point, while sodium bisulfate has a high boiling point. Also, note that we added some water to the flask when we started. The water and the hydrogen chloride forms something called an azeotrope, which means that they boil at the same temperature. This makes it far easier to collect the acid produced, since hydrogen chloride is a gas at room temperature, but the azeotrope is liquid. Additionally, 
The azeotrope has a fixed composition of 20.2% hydrogen chloride, which is quite high, while the rest being water. The reaction mixture finally started boiling, and everything is running smoothly. Apparent hydrochloric acid vapors distilled over to the condenser and in the flask. The syringe here acts as a seal to prevent the acid vapors from escaping and also to provide a slight difference in pressure. When the syringe is pulled, the pressure decreases and the reaction mixture boils faster. Why this happens is kind of complicated and I will not explain it here. A while after, the reaction was like this. I've added some aluminum foil on the flask to raise the temperature and increase the speed of the distillation. The reaction is now finished. Let the apparatus cool and take the apparatus apart piece by piece. You can see that there is still quite a bit of liquid in the conical flask since I did not distill everything to completion. The round bottom flask contained about 50 milliliters of distillate. In the conical flask, there are also a large chunk of crystallized solid, which is probably sodium sulfate from the reaction. I poured the distillate into a measuring cylinder, and it is about 55 milliliters. I then weighed it on the balance, and it showed 66.5 grams. I also scraped out the solid in the flask and put it into a separate container. So here is what we got. 66.5 grams of pure azeotropic hydrochloric acid in the region bottle, and two bottles of residue from the conical flask. The final yield is about 73.7% based on the mass, which is quite significant since there are still a lot of liquid in the conical flask. Anyways, today's experiment had been a huge success. Thank you for watching. Bye.